What's the most exhilarating adventure on your bucket list? For me, it's been reaching the Arctic Circle, and after an unforgettable week on the road and the trails, my dream is closer than ever. But we still have thousands of miles to go and several obstacles to overcome. Join me and my good friend Sean from the story till now as we continue our epic journey northward. The adventure is only getting more intense. Stay tuned to discover what awaits us next. Welcome to day eight of our Arctic expedition. This morning, I'm fishing along a beautiful, serene, gently flowing river, hoping to catch some grayling. The tranquility of this river is a perfect start to the day. As the first raindrops begin to fall, I brewed a steaming hot cup of coffee and enjoyed it under the Patriot Camper's awning, listening to the soothing sounds of the rain. It's moments like this that remind me why this journey is so special. What a great place to wake up, have a cup of coffee, do a little fishing. Didn't catch anything this morning, but I did catch those two yesterday. And uh, my understanding is those were grayling. And so I learned a little bit about some, uh, some fish last night and those are uh, highly desirable. So the goal is to catch some more of those in the next couple days. But we're having a nice slow morning, taking it easy. And uh, you know, it's raining, so we're just, uh, just gonna enjoy this a little bit put the signing away and then uh, eventually we're gonna make our way to Watson Lake and then continue on. It's gonna be a nice day. campsite it's tough to say goodbye to that spot and uh, Sean just honked his horn at me apparently my collapsing bucket uh, fell off and was on the ground and I realized shame on me I didn't do a full walk around of the trailer to make sure everything was secure before you know we're on day eight and I think I've allowed myself to get a little complacent I gotta not do that I have to maintain the integrity of my gear and my vehicles and I always do well except for this morning a complete walk around or everything to make sure everything's secured and uh, I didn't do that this morning so now I'm kicking myself a little bit that's not gonna happen again all right we are on our way to Watson Lake that's our uh, our first stop for the day not too far away Just a quick thanks to the sponsor of this video, which is Onyx Off-Road. Onyx Off-Road has been an invaluable asset in helping me plan this trip and navigating out here in these remote areas. I'll leave a link down below where you can get 20% off of your membership to Onyx Off-Road. Well, I just saw my first porcupine ever in my entire life and I've always thought that they were these little tiny animals like the size of a skunk or something. This thing was huge. It was larger than a basketball. That was super cool. Okay, we are almost to the Yukon border and uh, I'm hoping there's like a really cool sign there to kind of mark the occasion of crossing this border because this is, a, this is a big deal. There's a lot of history going up in this place. About an hour drive north and we reach a major milestone in our journey, the British Columbia and Yukon border, marking the end of the stunning Stuart Cassier Highway Drive, which was absolutely incredible. The sight of the Yukon sign is filling us with excitement and anticipation. The Arctic is starting to feel closer than ever. Dude, we're in the Yukon. In the Yukon. Heck yeah, how cool is this? All right guys, Yukon, larger than life, that way. Saying goodbye to British Columbia. It's been nice, guys.
After crossing the Yukon border, we arrived in the small town of Watson Lake, the most civilization we had seen in days. Nestled in the heart of the Yukon, this town is a crucial stop for travelers like us. It's an important refueling point, and we're taking the opportunity to stock up on some groceries before continuing our journey north. Now, Watson Lake is not just a pit stop, it's a place rich with history and unique attractions. One of the most fascinating sites here is the Signpost Forest. Started in 1942 by a homesick soldier working on the Alaska Highway, the forest now has over 80,000 signs from around the world. Walking through this forest of signs is like taking a journey across the globe. Each sign tells a story of travelers who have passed through this remote part of the world. Well, I've read about this place online and uh, honestly, all the articles and pictures and even videos I've seen about this place do not do it justice. This is massive. There are a lot of signs here. It's just endless and uh, pretty cool. Uh, there's quite a few places that I've been. Poway, we used to live there, which is pretty neat. And something tells me that's highly illegal to bring that sign. Probably should have made like a little trail recon, you know, sign or something. We could have posted that here, but uh, still super cool. What a unique spot. Sean, what do you think, buddy? I don't know where I am. I know. I keep trying to find a sign that tells me what city I'm in. <laughs> Maybe I'm in Batavia. Clearwater. I feel like we're not prepared. Like maybe we should have brought a sign. Should have stolen some signs <laughs> along the way. We were just at the Yukon sign. Oh yeah, we could have carried that. We could have carried that over here. That's right. As I'm walking through this massive signpost forest, I'm just thinking about how each one of these signs carries a piece of someone's journey, a moment in time captured and shared right here. The forest is a living and growing monument to the spirit of adventurers and explorers. Wandering through these rows of signs, you can't help but feel a deep connection to those countless people that have gone before us. Another must visit in Watson Lake is the Visitor Information Center, which is just a short walk from the signpost forest, which houses an extensive history of the Alaska Highway, also known as the Alcan. Built in World War II as a supply route to Alaska, the Alcan stretches 1,400 miles through rugged wilderness. The construction of the highway was a monumental feat of engineering and perseverance involving over 18,000 soldiers and civilians. The exhibit here provides a deep dive into the challenges and triumphs of building this vital road through some of the harshest terrain in North America. As we leave Watson Lake, I'm reminded of the incredible journey I'm on and the many stories and history that have paved the way for this adventure. Okay, I have to admit, uh, the signpost forest was one bigger than I expected, but so much cooler. But then going into the visitor information center and hearing about the history of the Alaska Highway and how the American and Canadian armies, you know, built that road to, you know, defend against the Japanese during World War II. Just a cool story about this place. take a look at that massive black bear that was on the side of the road. I used my telephoto lens because I wasn't getting anywhere close to that big guy. But I'll tell you, I have seen so much wildlife on this trip so far and I'm not even halfway done. I mean, it started out with seeing big orange sheep for the first time. We saw that moose with the baby, which was super cool. I saw a beaver, we saw a porcupine, we've seen bald eagles, and now a bear. This is only gonna get better, I think. up for fuel in a small town I think it was called Tiffin um, I'm not sure how much I paid for fuel but it was probably a lot uh, because fuel stations are getting uh, sparser and sparser but really cool it's coming out of there like about a, a mile out of town there's this red fox just walking down the road no big deal uh, we pulled over and uh, honestly he didn't care 
about us at all. I was using the telephoto lens, but he got a pretty close to Sean's truck. So that's cool. Another uh, another cool sighting. All right, we have this big, massive lake that we have to drive all the way around. We're staying on the Alaska Highway, but we have a camp spot on another lake uh, that's about an hour and a half away. And we think it has a lot of potential. We've got about another 30 minutes to get to camp and uh, there's this sign on the side of the road that's a little disconcerting. You know we've seen a lot of great wildlife today but this is one I don't want to see. Sean and I are making, uh, it's about a 30 minute detour out of the way to go check out this campsite. And I'm a little bit speechless. I don't know if I've ever seen a lake this beautiful. I mean, we've seen some incredible scenery on the way here, guys, but this might be the top. Um, now, I, I have a, a window full, full of dead bugs, which is pretty gross. But on my left, there are some massive granite mountains and on my right is this just crystal clear lake super blue with snow-capped jagged mountains off in the background it, it's it's something like out of an Angela Adams painting I mean it is gorgeous I uh, I'll be curious to see what this campsite looks like um, this might be uh, this might have been the right call for this detour Beautiful. That water, the mountains. It's a little windy, but I can forgive the wind tonight for this view. Man, I love this planet. The air here in the Yukon is crisp and fresh, and I'm feeling pure joy in this moment. What a perfect culmination of our adventurous day. Now time to make a little dinner, and you wouldn't know it by the looks of it, but it's actually around eight o'clock at night. As we have been traveling north, the days are getting longer and longer, and tonight will be the first time that there will still be light in the sky all night long as we sleep. Now I'm just chopping up some vibrant fresh bell peppers, and then I just sauteed them up with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. Lastly, I just browned some stew meat and combined them all together. This is starting to smell really, really good. And having a hot meal at the end of a long day on the road and the trail just warms the soul. And I can't express enough the deep satisfaction we are feeling in this moment, knowing we've made it this far, overcome some challenges, and we've been embracing the unknown. This meal, this place with a good friend is the perfect way to wrap up the day. Sean and I have had an incredible evening here on this beautiful lakefront beach. Had an awesome dinner, and we've been hanging around uh, by the fire, just enjoying each other's company, having some great laughs and some great conversation. And you notice how bright it is out here? It's 9 o'clock, and that sun is at least two or three hours from setting. This is crazy. I've never experienced anything like this. Uh, I'm gonna have to put the covers over my head to get some sleep because uh, we're actually gonna call it a night, if you wanna call it that, and, uh, and go to bed. So, see you guys in the morning.
morning. It is day nine of my Arctic Circle adventure, and this campsite has been one of the highlights of the trip so far, but we do need to leave this morning. We're gonna head up to Whitehorse and Dawson Creek, and we're even thinking about seeing if we can do a little gold panning at uh, maybe our potential next campsite, but we gotta see how things go. We have a lot of miles and a lot of hours to put in, and it's still gonna be several days before we get to Tuk Tuk Tuk, but the adventure, the adventure continues. Okay, I wish I would have been quicker with turning my camera on, but just a minute after leaving camp, we saw two grizzly cubs scurry off into the trees. That means mom was not too far from our campsite. We definitely need to be more alert as we continue on. I'm fine seeing a grizzly from afar, but near my camp is a little too close for comfort. Okay, after a couple hours drive, we arrived in Whitehorse, the vibrant capital of the Yukon. Nestled along the banks of the Yukon River, Whitehorse is a bustling town with a rich history. Originally a Klondike Gold Rush settlement, it grew rapidly with the construction of the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway in the early 1900s. This narrow gauge railroad built to connect Sagway, Alaska to Whitehorse was crucial in transporting miners and supplies during the gold rush era. Today, Whitehorse offers a fascinating blend of historical charm and modern amenities, making it a perfect stop on our Arctic expedition. All right, we made it to Whitehorse. Nice easy drive. Sean's leading the way today. So we're gonna go uh, check out the town for a little bit, uh, get some fuel, get some supplies talking about like seeing if we can find a butcher shop and maybe get some caribou or some moose meat that'd be cool to grill up at the camp and if all goes well we might be up with somebody somebody kind of special here while we're here all right guys we're in uh hogan sports lodge uh sean saw this and we're like oh we need some tackle because i need to catch some more grilling and uh uh, ran into uh, Scott who works here who's a follower of the channel and he gave me some recommendations on some lures So we're gonna catch some fish guys Next a quick stop for a bite to eat and to meet up with an old friend But first I have to try this Canadian delicacy. I guess Your first uh, poutine. It's not it's not a legit poutine because it's tater tots not fries, but uh, We'll see how you feel. Oh look at that. Look at that cheese. It's a monster. It's so stringy. <laughs> Brad's having his first poutine ever. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's like pub food, you know, but it was pretty delicious. And I also had a bison burger and fries, and yes, I've opted to put my keto diet on hold for the rest of the trip. I'll start up again when I get home. We were also joined by Kevin from the YouTube channel Lifestyle Overland, and he and his daughter are traveling to Alaska and just happened to be in Whitehorse at the same time. What a coincidence, and so great to catch up with him. Well, lunch was fantastic, and I am stuffed, and yes, I, uh, I'm eating more carbs than I planned on this trip, but you know what, it was totally worth it. And what a great opportunity uh, meeting up with Kevin and his daughter from Lifestyle Overland. Uh, but whoever thought we would have met up here in the Yukon, but we've never hit a trail together. We've never gone camping together. And one of these days we're gonna make that happen. But what a great lunch. All right, now we're gonna go find a butcher shop and see if we can find some kind of specialty meat, get some fuel, some windshield washer fluid, and then we're going to, I and mean, then we gotta lace it down some miles and head north. But uh, Whitehorse, it was a nice little stop. Our first stop was a Canada Tire Store, which is kind of like if you smashed Home Depot, AutoZone, and Harbor Freight all together, this is what you would get. And we picked up some gold pans. Then we found a butcher shop and grabbed some elk steaks and bison sausage and hit the road. stopped in CarMax for fuel and coffee because uh, I think Sean and I are both dragging a little bit so we both got some afternoon coffee to kind of keep us going because we still have another about four and a half hours to get to Dawson City and uh, we're actually not going to go to Dawson City tonight we're going to go to a nearby camping area that we uh, that we think is going to be a pretty good spot now as I was at the gas station pumping up uh, I was talking to a really nice gentleman 
uh, his name was Jim, and he said that he actually helped build um, the road up to Tuk Tuk Tuk. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. I'm like, we're really looking forward to checking it out. And we're hoping that the ferries are running. He's like, yeah, he's like, I just talked to a guy up north uh, yesterday, and he said he's waiting for the ferries, so they're still not running. And so, uh, again, that's uh, that's one of the one of the hurdles we have to overcome is we've got to be able to to cross those two rivers, the Peel River and the Mackenzie River. And so we're going to keep a close eye on them. You know, the contingency is to maybe wait it out for a day or two. You know, we've got gold pans, we've got fishing poles. We'll just kind of see how things go. But uh, we're going to get to camp a little late tonight, but. It shouldn't matter because the sun is up until like 11, so we'll be fine. All right, well, you wouldn't know by the looks of it, but it's actually 9.13 in the evening. And uh, we went all the way into Dawson City to get fuel uh, because one of the gas stations that we went to on the way there, uh, the gas pump didn't work. And so we had to drive all the way to Dawson City and then we came all the way out to this old mining road where there was supposed to be this really cool camp spot next to the river where you can pan for gold. And well, we found it and it's not nice. Um, it's right on this industrial road. There's a lot of people driving around. There's already some people camping out there. So. Even though it's 9.13, we've opted to head out of here and, uh, and go check out another campsite. The cool thing is, is there is a ton of historical stuff down here, and they've done a really good job of documenting all these old mining claims and stuff. So I think this is definitely a place worth exploring, but right now, we're going to go check out camp. Well, after having no luck finding a campsite and driving around for about an hour, we opted to stay at a campground nearby. So... That's a wrap for tonight, but tomorrow we're going to go into Dawson City. You guys are going to love this. This morning on day nine, we are making our way into Dawson City, Yukon, and immediately it feels like stepping back in time. There are wooden sidewalks that creak under your feet as you stroll through this historic town, and the roads are all dirt, adding to its authentic frontier charm. Dawson City was the heart of the Klondike Gold Rush in the late 1890s, a bustling hub for attracting thousands of prospectors hoping to strike it rich. Walking through the town, Sean and I are surrounded by beautifully restored buildings, each with its own story to tell. The vibrant colors and intricate details of these structures transport us to an era of wild dreams and fierce determination. It's clear that Dawson City takes great pride in preserving its history, and it's evident in every corner of this incredible little city. One of the highlights in town is the Kino Riverboat, an iconic symbol of the town's rich history. This stern wheeler, now a static display, once navigated the treacherous waters of the Yukon River, carrying passengers and goods during the gold rush. Standing beside this majestic vessel, we can almost hear the echoes of a bygone era. We take a little extra time exploring the shops, each offering its own unique treasures and a glimpse into the town's past. The storekeepers are friendly and eager to share stories, adding to the sense of community and warmth that Dawson City exudes. Now, one place we decided to visit was one we weren't really sure about, but let me say right now, this is a must stop. The Dawson City Museum is incredible. Inside, we were greeted with an impressive collection of curated historical items. The exhibits vividly recount the town's origin, the gold rush frenzy, and the lives of the people who shaped its destiny. From vintage mining equipment to personal belongings of the early settlers, every item tells a story of perseverance and adventure. The museum truly brings the history of Dawson City to life, and we found ourselves captivated by this place. I strongly recommend a stop here. Dawson City was absolutely my favorite town we visited on this trip. The combination of history and culture and breathtaking scenery around every corner has left a lasting impression on me. Now, we headed out of town for a little bit, but we weren't done checking out historical stuff. Now, just outside of Dawson City, we were heading out to go do a little gold panning, but we came by the Dredge Number no. 4 Museum. 
home to the largest wooden hold dredge in North America. And we just happened to arrive just as they were giving a tour and we decided, why not? Let's go check it out. This massive piece of machinery was built in 1912 and it played a crucial role in the Klondike Gold Rush, extracting millions of dollars worth of gold from the Bonanza Creek. Walking through the museum, we gained a deeper understanding of the immense scale of the gold mining operations and the incredible engineering feats of the time. The stories of the men who operated this colossal dredge are a testament to the ingenuity and determination that defined the gold rush era. This was pretty cool. After the dredge tour, we made our way up the river where there is a public area that you are allowed to pan for gold. Now, neither Sean or I have ever panned for gold before, but what better place to give it a try? We had fun, but I'll say I think Sean has the gold panning bug. He found a couple flakes and I wasn't so lucky. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, it's on my finger, look. That is a gold flake, right? That's cool, man. Look at all the shiny though in there. There's lots in there. Lots of shiny in there. He talked about panning for gold the rest of the trip. I think he'll be back. I'm glad we took the time to visit all these places and have these experiences because it has made this adventure so much richer. But now, almost lunchtime, it's time to make our way to the famous Dempster Highway, which is our next objective. You aren't going to want to miss the next leg in this journey as we travel hundreds of miles in an attempt to reach the Arctic Ocean. It won't be easy and we will encounter many challenges that may just put an end to this trip altogether. If you've enjoyed this video, here are two other adventure videos I think you will really enjoy. And be sure to visit us over at trailrecon.com to outfit your vehicle for your next adventure. Thanks for watching.